question I always like to start off with, you know, something to get everyone laughing. Who uses a computer on a daily basis? Everyone. 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 So, anytime you're online, you should be worrying about data security. It's a 24 hour, seven day a week, 365 day a year thing to be worrying about. There's, I call them bad guys. There's bad guys out there. They don't care. They only care about one thing, and that's putting money in their pockets, selling information on the dark web, or extorting money from them. Um, there's a lot of bad ways they do it. The first one is called ransomware. What ransomware is, is they will send you a link. You click on a link, all of a sudden you see something pop up on your computer. Your computer is shut down. Please send X amount of money to this account. This is the routing number, this is the account number, and we'll let your computer back up. It happens more often than people think. Uh, just reading a couple weeks ago, there was a uh, city uh, in Connecticut, their whole city office got ransomware. They had to fork over $20,000 so they could get everything up and running again. And they try to, you know, they call the FBI, they call the police. They can't do anything because they bounce all over the place. It, it looks like it's coming from Sweden, and then when they look again, it looks like it's coming from Hong Kong. They can't track it. Um, malware, it's a software that embeds into your system and <coughs> causes damage to the computer. It may take away some of your files. It may hit, you know, it may hit your server and shut down your server. It's so simple now, not only over the internet, you could have a disgruntled employee who has malware, let's say, on a thumb drive walks up to your server, pops it in, two seconds, server's erased. That's how uh, how easily it's done, but how, you know, how fast it can be done as well. Um, a phishing campaign, I'm sure everyone's heard of phishing campaigns. Um, that's to gain your personal information. Um, what you'll do is you'll get an email or you'll get a link and it says, oh, you need to update your face Facebook account password. Click on the link. You go to a site, it looks just like Facebook, it looks just like LinkedIn, it looks just like, you know, Netflix. Even. Put in your name and your account, hit send, it then redirects you, it puts all of your information into the actual Netflix account, but what happened there? They just got your account information. Um, and then, it's not so much new, but it, you're hearing more and more about it, it's called spear phishing. And what that is, is that if it is a big enough company, um, People will hack into your system, and they'll look at an email between the CFO and the CEO, CFOs, and they'll they'll look at one, they'll look at two, they'll look at twenty, and what they'll do is they will actually learn the verbiage that your CEO uses, your CFO uses, the way you develop your email. Do you write in paragraphs? Do you write in quick two, three, you know, two, three sentences, then skip a line? And eventually, when they feel comfortable enough to do that. They will send, you know, they will make the mock email address from the CEO to the CFO, oh, send $2.1 million to this account because we need to get this vendor done. They'll do it as a vendor. They'll do it as a customer. I was just reading yesterday, actually, a company just uh, suspended their chief operations officer and chief financial officer over in Switzerland because that's what happened. They got spearfished really bad. And over a two-week period, they dropped 25 million. $25 million to these bad guys, so, you know, not so fun facts, the price it costs for an individual or a small business, um, even a medium to large size business, $1,000, if they can access your medical records, they can sell it for $1,000 on the dark web, about $22.39 for any credit card information, could be your company, could be, you know, your personal, $20 for a driver's license number. $3.05 for your Netflix account, and every email account, $2.29. Now, that's for sale on the dark web. If someone doesn't know what the dark web is, the dark web is always there. We can never see it. You have to have special programs to get into the dark web, but I say it's where the bad guys live. It's like the, uh, you know, the Legion, the Legion of Doom, so... It's like the Legion of Doom from the old Super Friends. You know, Lex Luthor's sitting there, and they got the eight guy and Solomon Grundy and they're just waiting to get this information so they could sell it, make money, and go a little crazy. So I put this on the board only for, let's say, uh, Mike, you, in your organization, five of your company credit cards get hacked. And you have 50 employees and all of their emails get hacked. 
So altogether, that's two hundred and twenty-four dollars and fifty cents. Now, a lot of small businesses, medium-sized business, that may be a drop in the bucket for them. But what these hackers are doing, they're not only attacking the one company; they're shooting their campaigns out to thousands and thousands and thousands of companies at the same time. And let's say they shoot it out to a thousand, and they have a fifty percent capture rate on their campaign. So what happens, you take that 224.50, multiply it by 500. Within, let's say it was a week, two week campaign, that hacker just made $112,000 in one week, two weeks, one month even. So what is that saying to you? We all need to quit our day jobs and let's become hackers. <laughs> That's the best way. No, I'm kidding. Um, so what can we do to protect ourselves? First thing, very easy better passwords on all of our machines. I could take a guess. Um, let's see. Mike, maybe one of your passwords is fuckfit93 because you graduated in 93. Um, Jeremy, let's say you're 90, right? 89. Okay, 89. Chad AQ89. Because I know you. I know your nickname was Chad. You <laughs> graduated in 89. AQ is a client. A lot of people do that. One of the most common passwords in the United States, I'm not kidding, password123. Mm -hmm. Password123. It's easy. People remember, you know, people can remember it. And what they do is they put it as all their passwords so they don't have to have a hassle when they're trying to remember passwords. We recommend 16, 15 to 16 characters, uppercase, lowercase, numbers, symbols, ampersands, exclamation points, question marks. Um, my favorite thing to do is I'll take a phrase, just any phrase, you know, the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog, and I will take the first letter of each of that phrase, uppercase, lowercase, if there's a, you know, if there's a O, I'll put a zero, if there's an A, I'll put an ampersand, and use that as a password, because that's a little bit more robust and people aren't going to think of that. Um, you know, a common mistake again personal information about you. I posted on my LinkedIn account, whoever's my friend, uh, Jimmy Kimmel sometimes does this. He, uh, he goes out and he talks to people on the street talking about password security and whatnot. And people will just give up their passwords and they don't even realize it because, you know, they have a camera on a microphone. Oh, so what do you use as a password? Oh, I use my dog's name. Oh, what's your dog's name? Oh, my dog's name's Fluffy. Oh, what else do you use? Oh, the year I graduated high school. What year did you graduate high school? You know. It's, it's so simple to divulge that information so fast and people don't realize it. Um, again, don't use the same password over multiple sites. Uh, there is a free download. It's called LastPass. Um, I highly recommend it because what it does is you can go on LastPass. They will give you one password, which is just like 20 to 30 characters, and it gets you into LastPass. I always say write it down and put it in a fireproof box because they will not give it back. Mm -hmm. But what happens is once you install LastPass, anytime you go on a website, LastPass will pick up that password, store it, lock it in a vault where no one can get to it. They have uh, 256 uh, encryption. So when you go back to those sites, all you have to do is hit sign in and it automatically signs in for you so you don't have to remember 30, 40, 50 passwords, whether it be banking, whether it be Facebook, whether it be LinkedIn. Um, and then a lot of people use security questions. I always say with that, that's great, because, but don't keep it simple. We live in America. We live in the United States. A lot of people pick the first thing that comes up. What's your favorite food? I'm going to take a guess. Pizza. Pizza. People are going to put pizza. So if I hack into someone's site and it says security question, what's your favorite food? First thing I'm going to try is pizza. Or, again, we all live here. Where, do you, where were you born? I'm going to take a guess and say Rochester. You know, if you're from North Carolina, I'm going to take a guess and say Raleigh, you know, or something like that. Um, there's also two-factor authentication. That's very important. Um, now, a lot of banks are now doing this, but they will send you a text message and say, okay, put this code in. Hackers are smart. They can get into your cell phone if they can get into your computer. So, unlike... Um, uh, app, an application that you can use for two-factor off, a text message, that stays on your phone until you delete it. I know I, I, when I had my business, I banked with Canandaigua National Bank. 
I probably still on my phone have text messages from them with, you know, with my authentication number, which I shouldn't do, but we get lazy and we're like, okay, no one's ever, it's never gonna, it's never gonna affect me. Um, it needs to be what's called token-based, which is an application. Um, I personally like Authy. I don't, you know, I don't get any money from Authy or anything, but it's a, it's a good app that goes on your phone because what that does, when you sign in, it says you need an authorization. It sends it right to the app. The app will then pop up. You hit the button. You have 10 seconds to put in that number before it expires. And if it expires, you have to do it again. Where with the SMS-based text messaging, again, it can stay on your phone for a very long time. Um, another simple thing, an antivirus. Put an antivirus on your computer. Now, a lot of computers that you buy, laptops, whatnot, they already come with that antivirus, which is great. It helps. But for a more robust, I always say subscribe to an antivirus service. Um, you know, we do offer that, but and I'm not here for sales pitch. I'm just here for information. Um, you know, you could go on Semantic's website, Norton's website, and subscribe to that service because an antivirus will help. Uh, firewall. I don't know if anyone knows what a firewall is. Firewall is an appliance that connects to your server, and what it does is it watches the traffic going in and out, inward and outward of your server, and the internal network is trusted because it's your network. You set it up. You know what it is. You got to worry about what's coming through the you know through the internet down into your server. So what it does is it goes in, and the easiest way to say it, it scrubs every single thing that's going through that firewall. If it sees something. And it gets patched and updated so it has all the latest, greatest viruses, worms, Trojan horses, spyware, phishing. If it sees anything that appears to be a red flag, it wipes it clean, sends it up into the cloud to what's called a sandbox. Now what a sandbox is, it's in the cloud, there's like four or five different systems that go there and you picture a giant sandbox. And what they do is they take it, they shake it, anything that has that virus in it goes out anything that's safe, you'll get an email, or your network administrator will get an email, hey, this came through, we scrubbed it, it looks safe, but it's still your discretion whether or not you want to download it to your server. And the benefits of that is that it's continuous. If there's a new virus out there and they catch it, or a new phishing campaign, a new spear phishing campaign, they'll catch it, and then I'll be added to that database. Um, another, <coughs> another simple thing is a whitelist and a blacklist. If you own a company and you notice that, you know, employee ABC goes, logs on to Facebook 10 minutes before lunch, goes through the half hour, and they're on, then progressively, and it, it happens to all of us, progressively, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, half hour. I was at a client two weeks ago, and uh, the owner, she told me that she noticed that her employee was on Craigslist during lunch, but after a couple weeks, it became lunch plus an hour, lunch plus two hours. And there was one time that this employee was on Craigslist for six hours a day and an eight hour work day because she wasn't on it that day. Um, whitelist, blacklist, again, if you know you go to certain sites, let's say you're in manufacturing and let's say you need to get parts off of eBay. eBay, you can make a whitelist. Let's say you don't want your employees on Facebook. You don't want them on Twitter. You can block that through your network. So even if they try to get on it, it automatically blocks it and it goes right into the firewall. Anytime any information from those sites are going in, it'll block it. <coughs> Managed services, what I do for a living. We go into a company and again, let's say you, you don't have an IT director, you don't have a network administrator, but you have that guy who is one of your sales guys who knows a little bit about IT, took a lot of courses in college or whatnot. So, something breaks. He gets up from his desk, walks over, takes him about 20 minutes to fix it. But when he does that, you realize it's on all the other computers. So that person then has to go to all the other computers to fix it. Wasted, not, not wasted, he fixed the problem, but it was about a good four hours of the day. Your production on that side is going to be lower. What managed service does is we go in and install our software. We offer 24-7 support. We are live, online help desk. 24 7, 365. Um, between business hours, you call up, you get a live person. They remote in, they fix the problem. Off of business hours, they have a pager. We have one or two techs that are on call, they have a pager, they call up, do the same thing. On the weekends, same thing. It's a little bit more lead time on the weekends, but 
we're there 24 7 365. Uh, we also a benefit of having the managed services is that we have certified engineers we have more than one certified tech and network administrator on board so we're always we always do a proactive approach all the latest patches all the latest firewalls um, we just did over this week we just did 200 firewall patches remotely because they came out with a new update and we can do that remotely so when you put your you know head down there on your pillow at night you're like oh, I could actually sleep because I'm not worried about anyone messing with me um, and then security training we also do security training and there's a lot of security security training out there uh, social engineering uh, this is the funniest thing in the computer industry it's called ethical hacking um, what will happen is the uh, our vice president of our company is certified in ethical ha hacking so he goes into your company, he goes on your network, and he, and he says, Jeremy, all right, I'm going to send, throughout a week, I'm going to send 25 phishing emails out to all the people who work for you and yourself. And at the end of that week, two weeks, you get a report. Okay. It was clicked on this many times. It wasn't clicked on at all, which is great. And what we do after that is we usually do what uh, we call it a lunch. Event. You provide the lunch, we provide the lunch. Our VP will come in, he'll talk to your employees, and he'll be like, look, this is what happened. This is why these are the red flags that you have to look for. I always say, if your gut says don't click on it, don't click on it. You know, call your IT guy, call your network administrator. If you're a client, call us. We'll 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 walk you through it. Um, you know, there's many sites that you can go to personally to protect your identity, cybersecurity online, LifeLock, Experian ID, um, MyFICO. You know, all that stuff. That is a good start for an individual base keeping keeping yourself safe online. Um, we offer a product called JSA Guardian um, ID and JSA Guardian PC. It's for the three to five person office or an individual and it's thirty dollars a month and it does the exact same thing that our managed services do, but there's a lot of smaller businesses that will not, you know, don't say I don't want to do a managed service, but I want all the bells and whistles. Mm -hmm. And that's what we do. And it's more based towards smaller businesses, individuals. Uh, our ID program is the identity theft one that does offer a million dollar insurance policy on it. If something happens, we pay up to a million dollars of uh, what's gotten taken from it. So that's data security. Now, and I'll make data back up quick because I know everyone wants to get to their offices and drive in the snow. <laughs> Data backup. How long can your business run without a server, without a PC, without a laptop? Could be an hour, could be a day, could be two days, could be a week. Anytime your server, anytime your files, anytime your network's down, it's costing you. Um, what is data backup? It is copying files and folders from one location somewhere else. So you have that. There's different types. Um, a lot of people on a server have a spare hard drive that's in that server and they back it up from one to the other. So if the first hard drive goes down, they can spin up that second hard drive. That's called a local backup. Um, a lot of people, for a local backup, use what's called an external hard drive. It's a cord that goes out of your network into a little box that has a hard drive. All your files are getting stored there. Uh, network attached storage, called a NAS device, same thing. It's usually a little bit more robust, usually has two or three hard drives. Same thing, goes from your network, goes into that NAS. Um, now, that is a local backup. So what that does is that copies your files in your folder. Doesn't really help with any apps or software you use, any kind of operating system. Also, let's say there's a small fire in the building you work in, sprinklers go off, water damage, fire damage. It could be a case where someone breaks in and takes that external hard drive right out of the server room and walks away with it. They still have all your information. <coughs> There's also cloud storage, which once it's uh, you move your files and folders up into a cloud, there's a lot of apps that do it. It's, you know, it's inexpensive. It's great. The cloud is wonderful because the information is going to be there, and it's usually and it's very encrypted, 256 encryption. It's very safe, but what happens if you can't get that data back from the cloud? Which, you know, nine times out of ten you can. But the problem is when you're uploading to the cloud, when you're uploading on a local backup, what happens is 
Everyone does it. No one tries to recover it. Everyone always thinks worst case scenario. Oh, it'll never happen. We'll never have a fire. We'll never have water damage. You know, a telephone pole won't hit my building or my house and, you know, just wipe everything out. But let's say it does. And then you try to get that data back and it's corrupted. Or there was a bad file that you loaded up. Or the file that you wanted to be there was never backed up. It's gone. It's not coming back. Um, I like to recommend what's called a hybrid data backup. You have, on one side, you have your on-site backup, your local backup. And what that does, again, all your files and folders, goes to the cloud as well. Now, usually with cloud cloud data backup, you're stored in two locations. We, like uh, Datto, Datto is one of our partners. So once we upload it into the cloud, it goes to the cloud, then it gets downloaded to a storage facility on another external hard drive in Pennsylvania, down to another uh, hard drive storage facility in Utah. So what we're doing, we, it's redundancy. You have your logo, you have your cloud, but then off that cloud you have two more external. So let's say something happens to the place in Pennsylvania. Something happens to your location, you can't get the data off the cloud. We send you the hard drive from Utah to your location so you can be up and running with your files and folders. Um, <coughs> Problem though with backup, a lot of people do. They set a time, okay, I'm going to back up once a week. That Friday comes, it's 4:30. You're ready to back up your data. You get a call from your wife. You get a call from your kids. Oh, can you pick me up? Or oh, can you take me in? Okay, yeah. I'll worry about the I'll worry about the backup on Monday. Oh, I uh, really I went to lunch. I want it's a nice day out. I want to play golf. I won't even worry about the backup. I'll do it on Monday. A lot of people do that. Data backup has to be done if you want to keep your files in full. Um, again, are there any files that are corrupted on the backup? You have to check. You, once you load it, I would wait a couple days, try to get it back onto your system to make sure that you can get it back in case of a disaster. Again, no one ever wants to think about the worst case scenario. I like to all the time just because if something happens, I know I can get my data back. Um, I always recommend for you know people, network administrators, IT directors when they're doing backups, you know what, lock yourself in your server room, put on put on your earbuds, play your music, take your phone, put it away, put it on your desk, and do your backup. That's the best thing you can do. You have to take the time to do that backup. Once that backup is done, verify that all the data is securely stored, not corrupted, and then try to restore the data. Like I said. Um, there's a lot of options that they have online as well. Carbonite, Evolt, Dell, NetApp, uh, Veritas. What we do in managed services is again, we use data, but we use, uh, we use an appliance called the Cirrus and the Alta. And what these do, we have your network attached storage. You're going up to the cloud. We install an appliance that every hour on the hour or sooner or however, however many times you want to do it, it takes a snapshot of your whole server your operating system, your applications, anything you use to keep your business functioning on a daily basis. It goes into that appliance. At the end of the day, it's uploaded into the cloud, again, so we have your whole server in our cloud. If something happens, let's say there's a fire, let's say something happens everywhere, <laughs> and you are working out of your house, but you have a deadline. To we fire up a virtual server in the cloud, you VPN in. Everything that was on your server is on your computer. And we regularly test it. We test it every week, make sure that we can get all of your information back. Um, it also, once it goes up to the cloud, we get a report back that says everything was good, there was no corrupt files, everything was loaded, we send that to the customer. It's just a little, extra little added thing that we do. So again, when you put your head down at night on your pillow, you know that all your data is backed up. If something God forbid happens, you're still going to be up and running. We get you up in anywhere between 10 to 30 minutes. We can have you up and running. Just spin up that virtual server. You and your employees are good with that. That is all I have. I'm open for questions if anyone has any. I do appreciate uh, all of your time today coming out to uh, listen to me. I'm, I'm very glad I came as well. So it's, uh, you know, seeing some familiar faces, famous people on TV and whatnot. <laughs> 
with this spear phishing, once they pay the money to the you know hacker, do they just the hacker just let them just come out there? Uh, that's ransomware, but spear, oh, ransomware. Fi- spear phishing is just your computer doesn't get locked. You just have to take them. Now, what banks are trying to do now is they are trying to do almost like a third layer of protection. You've got the routing number, you've got the account number. A lot of banks are now wanting to put name on the account. So if I was a spear fisher and let's say I was pretending to be ABC company, which is your biggest enemy, and you s- and my name's Dave Johnson. This guy may not be Dave Johnson. When he opens his account, he can't put Dave Johnson. He can't put ABC company. So he puts, you know, Mike Smith. So you routing, account number, you put in Dave Johnson. The banks are trying now, once you put that name in, it has to be authorized. It has to be okay. We have to call Dave Johnson. They call the num- you know, they look at the routing number, they look at the account number, wait a sec, that's not Dave Johnson. So they'll flag it. Now, again, with spear phishing, ransomware and whatnot, usually banks are good about this. That within I think it's twelve hours if you wire, you can always try to claw back that wire. Now it only works probably about twelve percent of the time. But what they say is, oh, you did it online, or you did it, you know, on your phone. You authorized it because that was working. So it's like I said, there's a lot of bad guys out there, and they do some bad things. And spear phishing is is getting worse. So that's a question. I mean, if it's ransomware, I mean, you mentioned somebody paid twenty thousand dollars. They're really bad guys. Once I got twenty thousand dollars, I'm still planning to take a hike. I mean, this, this, how? I'm kind of curious. What percentage of the time when someone pays the ransom does it actually work? Oh, it works. Right. It does work because once you're in that system for too long, and they can ping you, then that's when you're in trouble. So they're hoping on it, and you know, you you don't have to really pay the ransomware, but people get scared. That's the thing. They they prey on people being nervous and scared. Where. A lot of times, if it's an individual computer, which I've seen, and you know, it'd be like, oh, this is XNX from the federal government. We noticed you had some, you know, pornography, or you were searching rice cookers, and you know, because that's how you make a bomb. You need to pay us a thousand dollars right now, or we'll take your search history and blast it out. And an individual gets scared, you know, and even if. If they are doing something shady, but if they're not, it's still it's scary. It's like, oh, I don't want the FBI coming up. He said, they'll pay that quick thousand dollars, or it could be five hundred. But again, they're not targeting one person. These campaigns are going out to hundreds and thousands of people. So <coughs> if this guy sends it out to a hundred thousand people, and let's say twenty of them yeah. pay five hundred bucks. Yeah. Hey, it's, it, it is. It's a numbers game, and it's so easy for them to do it. And again, with the dark web, they have forums on the dark web for people to buy and exchange hacking programs. Okay, for $7,000, you could buy this hacking program. It's already got the database, it's already composed, it's already going out to 200,000 people. You're taking a gamble, but the odds of you making more than that $7,000 for that hacking program are pretty high. So, so when you tell me like the, all the hacking programs on the dark web, do you have like who knows about the, do you guys go like like the counter intel? Do you know like what's out there, what hackers you know have access and to? Or and and that's what we do. We again proactiveness. Yeah. With our firewalls that we use, with our security that we use, everything's already out there. It's just a matter of catching it. And a lot of business owners, a lot of you know, I don't want to say, and a lot of network administrators who know IT but don't really know IT. They're not certified engineers. They're not you know, cybersecurity experts. What happens then is they think they're doing the best, and maybe they are, but with a managed service, again, you have certified engineers, you have level two techs on board, you have people who, this is their living. I mean, I'm not a techie guy, I'm really not. You know, I'm just, I always say I'm I'm a good talker and good sales, (laughs) but I'm not that techie. I can sell you the service and tell you what it does, but as far as fixing it, I leave that to the guys who are experts who went to school you know, four or five years, they have all their certifications, their Cisco certification, they have their cybersecurity certification, A plus Microsoft. They know what they're doing. Sometimes I'll walk into the break room and I'll hear them talking about something. I'll just be like, I'm just going to walk this way because I have nothing to add unless you want to talk about baseball or football. That's, that's where I can go. But, but yes, it's 
it is again 24 7 365 day a year you always have to worry about it um, whether it be individually small medium sized business we we have some large business clients like I was saying we just signed Bamboro Subaru um, we're handling all of their cybersecurity all of their managed services and it's it's a hassle because the bad guys aren't going to stop they're going to they're going to come out with new and exciting things to try to get you to uh, give you their information I did leave a uh, my card and there's uh, a little article from our blog at justink.com uh, that's a takeaway just when you get a chance to read it just kind of a little bit more about data security what I've gone over a little bit more robustly so I mean, it's a kind of back and forth and I sort of uh, put it maybe your terms I talk to people obviously about their wills and estates and taxes and mm -hmm. donations and things of that nature and I always say when I'm talking in George's world I always say it's kind of like computer hacking with Uncle Sam you know, every time the government comes out with a certain way to tax you, your accountant or somebody tries to find a way to shelter you. And every time you, they find a way to shelter you, they find a way, a new law to, to, to get your money. I think, it, and I always compare it to a computer. Every time there's, every time there's a, a hack, you know, there's a patch. Every time there's a patch, there's a hack around the patch. And it's a yeah. constant thing. So I think this is not a, this is a never a, okay, I put this in a place, now I'm done. Right. I, I think. Okay, that's my analogy. No, that's, that's, that's exactly right. right. Where, I mean, my business, too. We get emails all the time, and we get clients calls all the time. They about I got a letter from the IRS, an email from the IRS. No, you didn't. No, <laughs> no you didn't. Yeah. It looks really, it looks great. I mean, you look in there, and it, it, there'll be a little word or something to change. But I mean, they're they're getting they're getting good at that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 I always say a good thing to do as well if you get an email that has a click, and let's say it's IRS.gov. Mm -hmm is what the email looks like. Now, if you hover your mouse over that it clickable link, be. if you look down on your bottom, it'll show you it's not IRS.gov. It's like, you know, msmith at gmail.com. Mm -hmm. So that, that's always a, a little hint that can also help with that. So you only hack, so say, I mean, you have the, the preview page, you open it up. Is, is it only like hack if you actually click on the link? Or yes. Yep, yep. And, what, and again, what a firewall does and what some anti, you know, some more robust antivirus will do, they'll already scrub it, so you'll never see those emails. So if you don't have a firewall, I recommend getting a firewall. And you can get them, if you have a web router, a web router works, a network router works as a firewall, but again, it's not as robust. It doesn't have all the updates, all the patches. Um, I would go out, personal or business, buy a firewall, have someone install it who knows how to install it. You can always call us, we can always come out and do it for you. Um, but yeah, firewalls are very important because it helps reduce A, it's spam filtering, B, any kind of virus that's out there, it will pick it up. And then, again, you'll get a report that says, okay, this email looks like it had this virus. So, with your discretion, you know, you have a user interface that so you can say, yes, accept it, scrub it, get rid of it. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good.